Hello MK Eagle View viewers, this is Mahesh Aditya, Geopolitical Analyst. Uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, one of the main issues that's been talk in, uh, that's been spoken in the media widely in the recent days. It's uh, Putin's visit to the Middle East and uh, how this has a huge influence on uh, the Indian government and Indian government's politics. Uh, let us now dive deep into this particular topic. So if you see on 6th of December, uh, just very recently, a uh, few days back, Putin uh, made an official state visit to the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. This is considered to be a very significant uh, uh, visit because after a long time, uh, he had made uh, an exclusive visit to the Middle East and that too during a warlike situation that's happening right now in Ukraine. If you see, uh, he had a very grand welcome both in the United Arab Emirates, Emirates as well as in Saudi Arabia. So in UAE, if you see, he, he had a grand welcome with over 21 gun salute and a flyby of uh, UAE's fighter jets uh, that actually uh, trailed smoke of uh, the Russian flag all the way throughout his uh, journey from uh, the Russia to the United Arab Emirates. This topic was widely spoken uh, based on his arrival and its importance and after he landed uh, he had a red carpet welcome and there were, we can see a lot of uh, UAE fighter jets uh, that uh, adorned the sky with the Russian flags and Russian flags were there, were there throughout Abu Dhabi. Uh, this is a very significant visit and uh, I'll just explain about the geopolitical impacts at the later stage. So if you see the President of the United Arab Emirates, uh, Sheikh Mohammed uh, bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Uh, so he addressed Mr. Putin as a dear friend. He had called him a dear friend. And this particular visit is considered to be really significant uh, because if you see United Arab Emirates is now one of the leading partners of uh, Russia in terms of trade and bilateral relations. If you see after war a lot of people has uh, a lot of people have flown out uh, came out from Russia and they've flown to the uh, Gulf state and especially if you see Dubai and Abu Dhabi has been a safe haven for a lot of Russian people and Russian trade has uh, increased tremendously between Russia and not just with the uh, UAE but with the other Middle Eastern states as well um, if you see also four Sukhoi Su-35s were actually flying uh, along with the Putin's aircraft all the way to Riyadh. So this shows the amount of grand welcome and the grand importance that was given to Putin at that point in time. Uh, straight after Abu Dhabi, if you see, uh, he spent one day over there and after Abu Dhabi, he had visited the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and even over there, he had a grand red carpet welcome by Mohammed uh, bin Salman, the MBS. Uh, the Crown Prince uh, actually awaited for Putin's arrival because as we all know, um, both the United States and Saudi Arabia have been having a, a rough past uh, with uh, both the bilateral relations and even when Biden visited uh, uh, KSA, uh, he wasn't uh, praised much or a lot of media uh, were in such a motive that uh, he was very reluctant to meet MBS, but both of them had bilateral relations uh, because it's unavoidable. U US's relations with Saudi in the Middle East is unavoidable. So taking all this into consideration, MBS was very much awaiting Putin's arrival in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Let's now, these are the facts. Let's now dive deep into the geopolitical aspects. So the first one is one of the primary reasons to visit Abu Dhabi, if you see the timing of the visit, it was right after the COP28 climate change that happened. It was very important because uh, uh, at this point in time, a lot of Western nations, especially G20 and G7 nations, predominantly Western nations were coming all the way from uh, Europe and the other states in collaborating with the global South countries to tackle the climate change. Uh, in uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, COP28's main agenda is to talk about uh, how the uh, lower income countries and the middle income countries and the developing countries, especially in the global south, they face the climate change. So this is really important because uh, they need to produce more uh, revenue through 
the supply of crude oil or they need to produce more energy uh, through uh, energy procurement not just energy procurement but also through export of their uh, uh, non-renewable resources for their income rotation was important uh, if COP28 promotes most of the green energy then export of uh, oil or export of other non-renewable energy wouldn't be possible correct so this is one of the primary reasons where uh, Putin was able to uh, foresee that particular situation wherein once it gets drained out once the non-renewable non energy gets drained out there should be a cooperation between the oil producing countries so this could be one of the main reasons why he visited uh, UAE at the very first place and the next is the OPEC plus deals as we were talking about uh, the oil and the uh, oil generating countries OPEC plus deals uh, OPEC plus member nations play a vital role in establishing deals with the other nations with regards to the crude oil export if you see uh, economically uh, if the crude oil production is uh, deliberately reduced then the demand of oil increases wherein the price also increases this is called the price cap so in order to increase the price cap the production will be restricted to a point in time Putin was very much aware that uh, a lot of his own resources were provided at a discount rate and uh, countering the western nations is one of the biggest things that he had ever focused upon and uh, crude oil and export of crude oil and export of energy was one of the main tools with which he could leverage upon attacking the western nations so OPEC plus membership and the discussion between Saudi Arabia, UAE and Russia played a vital role I would say then the next is the creation of trade routes as we all know um, india proposed this imec correct uh, india middle east europe corridor likewise even um, vladimir putin wanted to promote such trade routes because uh, depending just on suez canal and the suez canal routes wouldn't be very effective in the upcoming years so he was very well aware of the land routes and the uh, sea routes which he could make leverage of by using the Middle Eastern nations as one of the main uh, logistic uh, route. So the logistic services plays a vital part wherein uh, land route from uh, Russia through Middle East when it goes to Asia and other parts of Southeast Asia, uh, the effectiveness of their trade route in devoid of Suez canals uh, in devoid of Suez canal becomes uh, very very efficient so this is one of the major reasons why he mainly wanted to establish good relations with the Middle East in order to promote good trade route as well trade routes as well <clears throat> the next is the payment services that we are going to talk about if you see uh, dirhams and rials played a vital role because after uh, the sanctions the swift payment service for russia has become a very big hassle uh, because of uh, cancellation and swift payments ruble transactions has been uh, really affected and uh, we can see a steady decrease in the ruble rates uh, dirhams have been one of the major 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 uh, i would like to highlight this i would like to stress upon this particular fact because uh, dirhams were used as interconnecting currencies between Middle East, Asia, not just Middle East uh, and uh, Africa, but also between Middle East, Africa and Eurasia as well. Um, because trade happens within the SWIFT systems and uh, conversion of dirhams to US dollars uh, was very easy for a lot of people. Um, I would say uh, Putin uh, in person wanted uh, dirhams to be one of the main currencies of trade after renminbi yuan so this these payment system are very much useful because uh, we could see from a previous video that Lav sergey lavrov the foreign minister said that uh, they have accumulated billions and billions of rupees with them but the, those rupees are still stuck with them in a vault and they're not able to release them or trade with them in a in, in a widespread uh, uh, nations be it african nations or latin american nations or even countries from asia they're not able to use the uh, rupees which Russia has uh, so with these dirhams uh, with these rials a lot of rupees can also be traded in a way that uh, uh, dollars might not be the only hegemon in in trading uh, resources between nations 
and the next thing is uh, we are going to talk about Iran as well because um, after his visit after Putin's visit to the Middle East Ibrahim Raisi was invited in Kremlin and they had a wide range of talks uh, obviously this these particular talks uh, was based on the present war that's happening between Israel and Palestine so uh, Russia uh, if you see the historical trajectory they have been maintaining good relations with Israel for a very long time um, only after the Chechen war that uh, a Palestine was uh, Palestine came under limelight uh, for Russia because they Russia realized the minority groups I had said in the previous Dagestan video that Russia is now focusing on their minority groups as well so Palestine support uh, which is gone garnered all over the world especially by Iran is actually influenced uh, by Russia so Russia indirectly wanted to create a good relationship with Palestine in uh, with the assistance of Iran so this particular confirmation was made possible only through his visit because um, Russia's motive of supporting Israel has also been consistent throughout history but after their own uh, problems in their own country uh, challenging their sovereignty and inter in uh, uh, territorial integrity Russia wanted to have a good relation with Palestine as well so for this Iran uh, their best friend actually uh, cooperated and we can say that Iran directly influenced Russia to support uh, Palestine and the next is uh, Iran's oil supply cooperation if you see in the Middle East Iran is one of the only few countries which doesn't export more of oil because obviously uh, Iran has been sanctioned by the United States and uh, the inability to export oil is very much uh, evident from the sanctions imposed so Iran is now in talks with Russia to have a collaborative efforts of uh, having oil trade if uh, Russia faces a deficit or if Iran faces deficit in production both of them can help mutually so these sort of talks uh, might happen in future um, as, as a foundation for these particular talks Ibrahim Raisi's presence in Kremlin was more important and uh, for the fact that we all know um, the foreign the ex foreign minister of china wang yi brokered the resuming of ties between uh, saudi arabia and uh, iran correct uh, he was very instrumental so after china if you see russia is one of the few countries which now tries to have good relations both with the uh, saudi arabian kingdom with the uh, kingdom of saudi arabia as well as with iran um, if you see after China Russia wanted to be another influential power in the Middle East uh, maintaining relations with both Saudi Arabia and Iran is a testament of uh, this particular decision taken by the Russian government and the next thing is the possible talks uh, between Iran and Russia with respect to the nuclear deal um, we recently if you see a couple of days back uh, we had uh, gotten an update that uh, Putin had announced expansion and upgradation of Russia's naval capabilities, especially uh, in Black Sea, Caspian Sea, the Baltic Sea, the Arctic and in the Far East. Um, because this particular announcement came after the unveiling of two new nuclear submarines uh, that is Krasnoyarsk and uh, Krasnoyarsk and Alexander III. These uh, two nuclear submarines have been launched. So in commemoration of this particular launch, uh, Putin gave a huge announcement that uh, a lot of such nuclear submarines will be produced in the upcoming years. Uh, this particular video and this particular update came after the meeting of uh, meeting with uh, the Iranian uh, leadership, Ibrahim Raisi. So it is pretty much evident that Russia and Iran wanted to have stable relationship with respect to the uh, nuclear deals because nuclear programs have been in the forefront in Iran for many many years despite the United States sanctions so Russia's support to Iran uh, for these nuclear deals is pretty much evident with the uh, activities that's been happening in a couple of days but speaking of all these what are the main impacts uh, to India so oil prices as we know it is one of the main impact because uh, 
if you see the ranking of exports or wrong ranking of imports from other countries especially with respect to oil russia stands first second is iraq third is saudi arabia and fourth is united arab emirates so right now india imports most of its crude oil from russia correct so if you take the first four positions uh, russia the uh, united arab emirates and saudi arabia these three play a vital part so the oil uh, prices might not get affected for india but the thing is uh, having close relationship with these countries might actually help in uh, getting a lot of discount oil as well uh, because uh, saudi arabia has been exporting saudi arabia has been the sole supplier for uh, european countries with regards to the oil production um, if you see india needs to maintain same type of relationship because now that putin had visited all these middle eastern countries the urge of maintaining better relations with middle east also with russia is mandatory for india right now and the next is instc this is more of a more or less like a benefit for us uh, because if you see the instc or the international north south transport corridor uh, this is mainly a project that had been pr uh, proposed a uh, couple of uh, years back uh, between mumbai and st petersburg from mumbai to st petersburg so uh, if you see the trade, trade route it passes through iran it passes through the port of bandar abbas in iran so iran's talks with russia actually in a way it uh, improves the development of instc as well it improves the progress of the instc because better the bilateral relations between these two countries more sooner and more faster the program is so in a way for india uh, iran's uh, present ties with russia or ibrahim raisi's present uh, meet with putin might might uh, speed up our process and might speed up the entire development of instc and the last thing is the de-dollarization process so the de-dollarization de process is a main is a very very important factor because as you know um, both iran as well as russia is now suffering from heavy sanctions uh, from the united states correct so as of now opening opening up of vostro and nostro accounts that is one to one payment without involving a mediator uh, that is using us dollars the trade could be made possible so for this uh, iran's relations with russia is very much important because only then the promotion of vostro and nostro accounts becomes sooner and faster um as of now russia and iran trades only with a uh, ruble and with japanese yen to an extent uh, sometimes most of the trade between these two countries happen happens in renminbi yuan as well uh, with the chinese yuan as well but if you see um, even uh, avoiding chinese yuan these two countries could cooperate in establishing their own currencies correct like one to one trade currencies uh, indian rupees could be done with the same way wherein indian rupees could be traded directly with ruble um, with the recent uh, video obviously by foreign minister sergey lavrov he said that he had piled up lots of indian rupees right that piling up would actually ease the process wherein if there is more trade if there is more vostro account trade between countries between more than five or six countries um, the easement of rupees or the collection of rupees will actually get exhausted in a good way wherein they can literally trade for two or more currencies uh, by avoiding one particular uh, currency which is US dollars which is acting as a regime. So this is very much useful and uh, uh, these trade opportunities between the Gulf states provide both monetary and non-monetary support as well and this is also a very big commercial benefit for all the few country all the countries which i have talked about right now uh, hope you find this video very informative if you have any comments if you have any suggestions please mention in the comment section below uh, see you in the next video thank you namaste jai